In this example, you're going to analyze the function g of s. First, you're going to determine the phase and magnitude at 10 to the power of negative 3 and 10 to the power of 3 radians per second, and then you're going to expand the analysis to draw the entire body plot. Let's also try to link this transfer function and the results that you get in the body plot with the root locus and the Nyquist plots for the same transfer function and see if they are in agreement. But let's just start by simply calculating the magnitude and phase of g of s at 10 to the power of negative, negative 3 and 10 to the power of 3 radians per second. To do that, we can now rewrite this expression as a function of j omega, and this simply becomes j omega plus 0.1 divided by j omega plus 1, j omega plus 10, and j omega plus 100. We know that the magnitude of g j omega is the square root of omega squared plus 0 0.1 divided by square root of omega squared plus 1 squared. Here it is a square that I missed as well. This is imaginary part is squared plus real part is squared times omega squared plus 10 squared and times omega squared plus 100 squared. And you know that the phase of g j omega is simply the phase of all zeros minus the phase of all poles. That is, a10 of imaginary part j, uh, j omega is omega, divided by real part 0 0.1, minus the sum of the angle of all poles. Starting with this one, we have a10 of omega over 1, plus a10 of omega over 10 and plus a10 inverse tangent of omega over 100. Closing the parenthesis, so we have angle of all zeros minus the sum of the angle of all poles. Now we wish to evaluate this at two particular frequencies, omega equals to 10 to the negative 3 and omega equals to 10 to the power of 3 radians per second. This is very straightforward. Now we have phase and magnitude as a function of omega. We can simply replace omega in the expressions here and solve for the phase and magnitude. For 10 to the power of negative 3, we get the magnitude at 10 to the power of negative 4, or 20 log of 10 to the negative 4 is 80, negative 80 dB. And the phase is 0 0.5 degrees. If you solve for omega equals to 10 to the power of 3, we'll get the magnitude of gj omega at 10 to the power of negative 6, or 20 log of 10 to the power of negative 6 is negative 120 dB. And the phase can also be calculated. Before we calculate the phase, let's look at the transfer function and guess what the phase is at 10 to the power of 3. Think about the Bode plot. What is happening on the Bode plot? When the frequency here is 10 to the power of 3, we are now to the left of all cutoff frequencies. What should be the phase? Phase should tend to negative 180 degrees. How do I know that? When you are to the far left, we have a zero, then we have a pole, so they will cancel out, and then you are left with two poles. Each one will add the negative 90 degrees, so this should be very close to negative 180 degrees because the frequency we have here is to the right of all cutoff frequencies. And the actual number, if you replace omega here and so forth, is negative 173 degrees. So indeed, this gives us an indication that our result is probably correct. We can also analyze the result to obtain for 10 to the negative 3. Does it make sense to have a phase at 0 0.5 degrees? Now let's look at the transfer function. Now we are to the left of all cutoff frequencies. We haven't reached any cutoff frequency. There are no poles at the origin, there are no zeros at the origin, so the phase must indeed be very close to 0 degrees, and this is what we see in the calculation. So this is a good indication for us that both phases are in fact in the range that we expect them to be, so the calculation is probably correct. So let me write these values back here. We don't need them to draw the body plot, but let's keep these values 
for further analysis later to see if our body plot is actually in agreement with this. So we have a magnitude of negative 80 dB and you have a phase of approximately 0 and 10 to the power of 3. We have a magnitude of around negative 120 degrees and a phase of approximately negative 180 degrees. Again, this information is not needed to draw the body plot. I just want to draw the body plot and then see if these values here are in agreement with the body plot we'll come up with. So let me erase this and I'll do the body plot. Now let's draw the body plot. To do that, we need to first write this expression in the standard form for body plot analysis. In that standard form, we need S to be divided by its cutoff frequency plus 1. We can now rewrite S, uh, G of S as factoring out 0 0.1. You have 0 0.1 times S over 0 0.1 plus 1 divided by factoring 1, 10, and 100. That gives 10 times 100 times S plus 1 times S over 10 plus 1 times S over 100 plus 1, which gives G of S S 0 0.1 divided by 1000, that is 10 to the power of negative 4, S over 0 0.1 plus 1, divided by S plus 1, S over 10 plus 1, and S over 100 plus 1. Now that you have identified all cutoff frequencies and you have the standard form, we can start to draw the Bode plot. Let's start at very low frequencies. This is easy because you don't have any poles or zeros at the origin. When you are at very low frequencies, past all cutoff frequencies, what is left on the Bode plot? There are no poles and no zeros. The first cutoff frequency that we have is 0 0.1 radians per second. So we, if we are to the left of 0 0.1, the only thing acting on the Bode plot is the gain is 10 to the power of negative 4, which means that the magnitude of the transfer function at a low frequencies will be simply 20 log of 10 to the power of negative 4, which is negative 80 dB. Aha, exactly what you had there. Does this make sense? Well, it does because at low frequencies, we only have a gain. If you go even lower, here 10 to the power of negative 2 to negative 3, there is still no poles and no zeros, so there is no need for the slope or the, the magnitude to change. It will continue to be 10 to uh, negative 80 dB. So anything lower than 0 0.1 is 80 dB, negative 80 dB. This is exactly what we found there. So we know that at 10 to the power of negative 2, where our frequency axis here happens to begin, we should be at negative 80 dB. And we should be at the same value up to the first cutoff frequency, which in this case is 0 0.1 radians per second. So up to 0 0.1 radians per second, the magnitude is negative 80 dB. What happens at 0 0.1 radians per second? Well, there is a zero. This zero here will now change the slope, and we change the slope by plus 20 decibels per decade. This means that our slope now that is zero dec decibels per decade will go up will become plus 20 decibels per decade. If at 0 0.1 we are at negative 80, one decade from now, that is 1 radians per second, a factor of 10 in the frequency, the body plot goes up by 20 decibels and will reach negative 60. So at 1 radians per second, we should be at around 60 dB, because the slope now is plus 20 dB per decade. The reason I'm stopping at 1 radians per second is that we have another, z another cutoff frequency here, and it's the cutoff frequency of this pole. It's a cutoff frequency of a pole, so what happens now? Well, a pole will add negative 20 decibels per decade to the magnitude. Our current slope is plus 20 decibels per decade. If we add a pole, that it becomes zero decibels per decade. It doesn't become zero decibels, it becomes, the slope becomes zero decibels per decade. So past now one radians per second, the slope is zero, which means that this will remain flat up to the next cutoff frequency, which happens to be 
10 to the power of 1. Okay, now this slope is 0 up to the next cutoff frequency, which is 10 radians per second. When you reach 10 radians per second, what happens? Well, here we encounter another pole, and this pole will now add negative 20 decibels per decade to the slope again, so the slope that is 0 becomes negative 20 dB per decade. So we are now sitting at 10 radians per second. When you move one decade from now, that is 100, what is the slope? Or what is the magnitude? Well, if at 10 we are at negative 60, at 100 we should be back to negative 80. This is one decade. The body plot goes down by negative 20 dB. So we should be sitting again at where we started at negative 80 dB. So this is 0 dB per decade, and this is negative 20 dB per decade. Now let's stop at 100. Why? Because there is another pole at 100. What happens now? It's another pole. This pole will add another 20 decibels, negative 20 decibels per decade to the slope. The slope that is negative 20 becomes negative 40. Here we are at negative 80 dB. If we now increase the frequency by a factor of 10 and you go to 1000, what is the magnitude? We are at negative 80. The slope is negative 40 dB. So we will go down by negative 40 dB. We go to negative 120, which should be around here. The slope here is negative 40 dB per decade. So here we are at 80, negative 80. Here we are at negative 120. This is one decade. And this is 40 dB. So the magnitude of the body plot at 10 to the power of 3 radians per second is negative 120 dBs. And guess what? This is exactly what we calculated here when we did that analytically. Beautiful. Now let's move on to the phase. Let's do the same analysis. When you go to very low frequencies, there is no zero, there is no pole at the origin, so the only thing affecting the body plot is the gain. The gain has a phase of zero, so we will start our body plot with a zero slope for the phase, and the phase will stay at zero up to the first cutoff frequency, which is 0 0.1 radians per second. This is a zero, the zero adds negative 90 dBs, degrees, negative 90 degrees. And we will stay at zero up to the next cutoff frequency, which is one radians per second, that is a pole. A pole adds negative 90 degrees, we go back to zero. And now let's keep moving towards the higher frequencies, we reach 10. 10 is another cutoff frequency, and this cutoff frequency is due to a pole. This will again add negative 90 degrees, and we are now sitting at negative 90, past 10. Let's keep going. At 10 to the power of 2, here is another cutoff frequency, another increment of negative 90 degrees. We go from negative 90 to negative 180 degrees. And the actual phase would be some sort of interpolation of these values that attends to negative 180 degrees. This point here is 45 degrees. Here is 45 degrees. Here we have negative 45 degrees. And here we should have around negative 135 degrees. This is now the Bode plot. Now, does this make sense? Well, according to our calculations, it does. The phase starts at zero and goes towards negative 180 degrees. Very nice. It agrees with our calculations, but again, we can have the Bode plot and you can have analytical calculations independently, but they must agree. All right, now that you have the Bode plot and you know that the Bode plot makes sense, let's analyze the system a bit further. Based on the concept of stability margins, is this system closed-loop stable or unstable? In other words, if we take this system and put this in a unit feedback loop such as this one, is this system closed-loop stable or not? 
Based on the concept of gain margin, what is the value of k that would result in that critical point of a phase of 180 degrees and a gain of zero? So what are the phase and the gain margins here? Because the system never crosses 180 degrees, we cannot determine the phase and gain margins. It, this system tends to negative 180 degrees, but it never crosses 180 degrees. So technically, the system is always stable. There is no upper limit of k that will make the system reach that a critical point of 0 dB and 180 degrees, which would make the closed-loop system unstable. This system, based on the Bode plot, can be said to be always stable in a unit feedback loop. Is this true? How can you verify this assumption? Well, let's use a root locus. Let's look at what we have here, and let's do a nice root locus for this system. And this root locus will assume that a g of s is put in this unit feedback loop exactly like this one shown here. So what are the poles and zeros of this transfer function? We have a zero at negative 0 0.1, we have a pole at 1, we have a pole at 10, and we have a pole at 100. What is the root locus? Easy, this zero goes to that, this pole goes to that zero. We have an asymptote somewhere there, 1 and 90, 1 and negative 90 degrees. These two poles will come together, one goes up, one goes down like that, and as k tends to infinity, the system appears to be always stable as well. Right? These poles will never cross into the unstable region. All these values here are, of course, negative. Right? So based on the Bode plot and based on the root locus, we can affirm that this system is always closed loop state, regardless of the value of k. So what about the Nyquist plot? Can we try a Nyquist plot for this? Well, let's magically make the Nyquist plot appear here. There it is. And uh, let's analyze the same system using the Nyquist analysis. This is the Nyquist plot, and here we have, if you count the number of unstable poles, we have p equals to zero. Notice that if we increase k on the Nyquist plot, this Nyquist plot always expands to the right, but will never expand to the left, we will never encircle negative 1. So n, the number of encirclements of negative 1, is 0 for all k greater than 0, which means that a z is also 0 for all k greater than 0. And this system, according to this analysis, is also always stable for any positive value of k. So this now confirms, for the third time, our analysis that based on the Bode plot, the system is closed-loop stable, regardless of the value of k. Based on the root locus, we can see the same, very same, the very same result. The system never reaches instability. And based on the Nyquist plot, we have again the confirmation that the system is always closed-loop stable. So all these analyses are telling the same story. They are all in agreement, and the system is closed-loop stable.